Hey besties, welcome back to the official YouTube channel of the Sexy Music Assassins and I would like to do a shout out, okay, to my awesome friend Ben Ghazi, okay, I'm gonna include a screenshot of what he said, so he asked me to like demonstrate what I do, you know, for my, my neck, you know, like a neck care. Okay, actually, I really don't have any, like, of course, I I do, of course, I, every, everyone, okay, everybody takes a shower. That's what I do, okay? So, when you take a shower, of course, you have to, like, everything, you, you like, scrub this face, all your entire body. So, I don't know why until now I don't have wrinkles. that one so yeah just the routine okay take a shower take a bath okay scrub your face with your not so like super strong scent um, soap okay but me I literally use the Pantene body wash that's what I use for my face and for my neck and the whole entire body so that's that's really my um, secret. Not really a secret, secret, but yeah, secret. <laughs> so yeah, no, see that one? Yeah. That's a blessing from the Lord, really. You know, having a youthful, like, features, okay? So I'm already like, wait, what up? what's my age? Okay, 40 plus. There you go. I'm already 40 plus. And my kids tell me, they always tell me um, that I look really like young, you know, maybe 30, 35, 36, like that. But yeah, so special thanks to, to the Lord Almighty. All right, so. Before we start, okay, please follow all my TSMA family on smule.com. They're all amazing, amazing singers. And if you are TSMA and you're watching this video right now, I would just like to um, apologize, okay, for not being active in all our chat rooms, TSMA chat rooms. Because my phone is really, you know, low on you know that storage is really really low like 64 gigabytes i think and now it has only like i think like 17 something gigabytes um available or megabytes i'm not sure but i saw like 17 something all right so let's start all right please again follow all my tsma family on smule.com they're all amazing amazing singers all right i tried to sing earlier and my voice is really like cracking because i really don't have sleep we are trying to pack you know all our stuff right now as you see my background this is old background now i have to like remove this okay and wrap it with blanket because I really don't want to buy boxes, okay? They're super, super expensive. So, if you are, like, moving out of state, okay? You can make use of your blankets. Especially the thick ones. You can make use of that. And then rope, okay? If you can um, afford nowadays to buy tapes, okay? They're so, so expensive now. Like, one, like, um, 55 yards, okay? It's like six dollars now before it was like two something not six dollars so just think about it. if you have like how many rooms bedrooms in your house just like this one this is this one has three bedroom bedroom house so really you have to really like maximize you know the boxes especially of course um think about your finances too so if you can if you can really really afford then go ahead buy boxes but if you can just make use of the blankets okay then then tie it with ropes like that so 
So yeah. Um, God willing, okay, maybe this month or next month, we're moving to da 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 secret. <laughs> I will reveal to you. Uh, God willing, okay, okay. So we will cross the bridge when we get there. When we get get there. <laughs> All right. You see the one. Benghazi, thank you so much, buddy, for always supporting our channel. All right, so let's do this. All right, besties, so we all know that everywhere we go, you know, hearts everywhere, okay, are filled with brokenness, especially nowadays, okay? It's filled, of, it's filled with fear like that anxiety you know the world has turned its collective back on god okay and is verging on flatlining as jesus triumphant return you know it draws closer and closer by the moment so this is good shape for primer so my best is are you being consumed by the hopeless outlook of today's disintegrating society you know, struggling to find peace until Jesus comes. So, are you looking up for your blessed, you know, blessed hope and redeeming the time by sharing the gospel, okay? The good news of the gospel. So, we may not be at the end of the world just yet. We don't know, you know, but we are at the end of the age or what we call the world you know the world of the end like the end times okay so best is as we all know we are living in the end times you know if you read if you are reading the bible you can see the prophecies okay so tonight's episode we will be discussing about the urgent message okay that is found on the book of matthew 24 verses 1 to 14 all right so Matthew 24, okay, but we are going to read the whole Matthew 24, so we are going to tackle all the whole Matthew 24. So Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. So Jesus, verse 24, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, okay, and his disciples, you know, came up to show him the buildings of the temp temple. So verse 2, right? And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Okay, assuredly, as I say unto you, not, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So, what are the signs of the end times? Or what are the time? What are the signs of the times and the end of the age? So, verse 3 says, Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came okay, to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? So, and of the end of the age. So verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's this. Okay? Take heed that no one deceives you. Verse 5. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars, you know, rumors of wars, okay? Like what's happening right now, okay? See that you are not troubled, for A, all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So the Lord said, is not yet. Okay, verse 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes. What that, just like what happens in Turkey and Syria. In various places, not only there, but all over the world. So verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. See that? It's only the beginning of sorrow. So verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to the tribulation and kill you. 
and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So the Lord's Day talking about the believers. So verse 10, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. So verse 11, then many false prophets will rise up and will deceive many. Verse 12, and because lawlessness, okay, will abound, pestis, the love of many will grow cold. So verse 13, but he who endures to the end, okay, shall be saved. So verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. All right, so you can see the trail. This is so the great tribulation. Here comes the great tribulation. Verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, that's spoken of by Daniel the prophet, okay, standing in the holy place. Okay, whoever reads, let him understand. So verse 16. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, so verse 17. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. All right. Verse 18. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Okay. 19. Verse 19. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Okay. Verse 20. And pray that your flight. Okay may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. So verse 21, For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning okay, of the world until this time, okay? No, nor ever shall be. So this is verse 22, And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved but for the elect sake those days will be shortened this comes the rapture that's verse 23 then if anyone says to you look here is the christ or there do not believe it my best is verse 24 for false christ and false prophets will rise and show greatness okay they will show great signs and wonders to see, deceive a lot of people, you know, if possible, even the elect or what we call the believers. So, verse 25, see, I have told you beforehand. Okay, verse 26, therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out or look. He is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. Okay, my best is just be on guard so verse 27 right for as the lightning comes from the east okay and flashes to the west so also will be the coming of the son of man be so verse 28 for whatever the carcass is there the eagles will be gathered together there you go so the coming of the son of man so verse 29 immediately besties immediately after the tribulation okay of those days the sun will be darkened it says verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon okay will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken verse 30 then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven okay and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory 
Okay, so verse 31. And he will send his angels, okay, with a great sound of trumpet. To like that. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one of heaven to the other. Okay, this is the parable of the fig tree. Verse 32. Okay, Bessie, so now learn this parable from the fig tree. You see, when its branch has already become tender, my best is, and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near, right? So, verse 33. So you also, when you see all these things, you know it is near at the doors okay verse 34 assuredly my besties i say unto you this generation will by no means pass away till all these things takes place verse 35 so heaven and earth will pass away but the words of god will by no means pass away okay no one knows the day or the hour Okay, verse 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, my best is. But my Father only. That's in verse 36. So verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38. For us in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, okay, and giving in marriage until the day, okay, that Noah entered the ark, verse 39, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So verse 40, then two men, two men will be in the field. Right. One will be taken and the other left. We're talking about the rapture now. So, the sequence, okay, of this end times, tribulation first and then rapture. Okay, verse 41. Two men will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other one left. Verse 42. Watch. Therefore, my best is, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So verse 43. But know this, that if the master of the house, okay, had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Same thing as when the Lord is coming. So verse 44, besties. Therefore, you also be ready, my besties, all the believers. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Okay. So the faithful servant and the evil servant. Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Okay, verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. So assuredly, verse 47, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. So, so verse 48. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, verse 49, and begins to beat, okay, and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. All right, so verse 50, and the master of that servant, this, will come on that day when he is not looking for him okay and at an hour that he is not aware of so verse 51 this is 
and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion okay, with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth so besties okay, Jesus remarkable prophecy should impact the way we live the way we all live we are in the world of the end the end times as we all know okay this world will be a world of wars world of wars having heard about a lot of countries on the fault does this you know they owed a lot of money from china so eventually china will take over those countries mm, let's take note lots of prophecies now it's coming it's already unfolding so the rift is already here so china versus the world all right this is on global debt as more countries all right and countries start to default on their debts okay so china unlike us and japan and other allied countries okay china is refusing to forgive its loans so creating new tension with the us and its allies so when global leaders okay you know grappled with whether to write off you know, poor countries debts okay more than two decades ago you know bono was the central character so this time around it's beijing so china now is catching up to the western dominated international monetary fund and world bank and is exceeding other governments as in as the largest official lender okay to wide like worldwide swaths of the developing world so but the geopolit uh, you know the geopolitical like, power struggles you know you know between the u.s and china is inflicting like collateral damage okay on those countries so as beijing bulks up demands to write down its loans even as three in five okay low-income countries they are straining to pay their debts okay or are at the risk of defaulting amid this global economic pressure so best is you know that's really creating new, new tensions with the u.s government okay usa and its western allies so that will be on display as top finance officials you know gather okay in washington for the spring meetings right you know and the world bank so the u.s is pre pressing china to provide more like relief debt relief okay in what will be one of the most significant areas of conflict okay of this issue at this event so we'll see we'll see about that so the imf world bank and other development lenders okay besties have been running programs that under certain conditions okay forgive up to 100 percent of that in like struggling countries like an initiative that got a boost okay after bono and other celebrity you know celebrities led a high high profile public pressure campaign that was in the year 2000 so now treasury secretary you know janet yelin and other officials are growing you know adam at that what they view as like china okay china's hardline approach to lending is squeezing you know other countries okay and threatening to deepen poverty especially in africa and elsewhere so yeah also the conflict okay also highlights a new potential fault you know fault line in the global like economic order so china is pursuing a parallel system parallel system of 
<clears throat> development finance okay that challenges the western model okay of providing assistance and negotiating that um relief okay with borrowers which has been dominant since the end of world war Two. so best is china's approach to lending is wild widely considered okay more transactional and criticized as opaque so beijing's desire to you know access oil mineral, minerals and other commodities made these chinese lenders you know less prone okay to applying less you know offers in helping governments finance roads constructions bridges you know rail railroads okay to unlock those resources so so the ascendance of china in developing country okay finance this threatens to add to the broader like trend of decoupling you know, that is unraveling trade and technology ties with the west western okay so the debt china china is owed by poor countries you know it it only like consolidates its influence okay in africa and other regions so this is we are moving to more of a bi like bipolar system with a very very significant creditor to a great many countries bent okay on doing things like bilaterally with its own rules okay so the tension could be cut with a knife but we will see what's gonna happen we'll see so the issue will come to a head on like today's what may june or almost june all right so we will see if they can address the broader terms of restructuring sovereign debt okay we will see about that but we will pray also let's pray about that you know in distressed countries So we all know that those will affect like country specific efforts that have been largely deadlocked okay you know one of those is in zambia where china is a significant significant creditor you know the country defaulted on its public debt two years ago okay this is because of the COVID and has become a test case for dealing with a potential you know like onslaught of defaults uh, as the u.s federal reserve okay and the other major central banks are raising interest okay they're raising interest rates to tamp down inflation so that's making it more like expensive to pay off that dominated you know in dollars and other currencies so aside from those countries you know other countries like Sri Lanka, Ghana, Ethiopia, you know, Pakistan, you know, where China has left heavily, have already defaulted, okay, or are on the cusp of doing so. By this time, probably it's already defaulted. So the question is, my best is how many countries are owing China? If we go back to 2021st, 2021st, okay, of the 98th that's this 98 countries of whom data was available pakistan has 27.4 billion of external debt to china angola 22 billion ethiopia 7.4 billion kenya 7.4 billion sri lanka 7.2 billion held the biggest debts to china so china's loans okay pushing world's poorest countries okay to brink brink of collapse 
this is not good bestie so aghas and poor countries are facing really terrible like economic instability okay shaky and even collapse okay under the weight of hundreds of billions of dollars in foreign loans and that's so much of them from the world's biggest and most unforgiving government lender which is the Chinese government so a dozen poor countries are facing this economic instability again okay. this is really really not good it's not good especially we just had COVID and all this and that so the associated press analysis of a dozen countries okay most indebted to China like what I said, Pakistan, Zambia, Kenya, Mongolia, Laos, okay, found paying back that debt is consuming an ever greater amount of the tax revenue needed to keep okay, schools open, to provide safety, right, government, you know, safety, electricity, fuel to pay, to pay for food, stuff like that. And it's actually draining foreign currency reserves to these countries also you know is to pay interest this just probably goes to interest because the ha interest is very high on those loans so leaving some with just months before that money is gone oh my god i was like hmm why can't they just print a lot of money you know <laughs> so behind the scenes is china's reluctance to forgive debt and to extreme secrecy about how much money it has loaned and on what terms. So it has kept other major lenders from stepping in to help. So on top of that is the recent discovery that borrowers okay, have been required to put cash in hidden escrow accounts okay, then that push China to the front of the line of creditors to be paid wow later on china will own a lot of land but countries massive ownership so countries in ap's analysis had as much as 50 percent of that foreign loan from china and most were devoting more than a third of government revenue to paying off foreign debt like Zambia and Sri Lanka, my besties, okay, have already gone into default. So they were unable to even like pay interest on loans financing, you know, the construction of ports, stuff like that, so the powers, the power plants, okay, mines. Like in Pakistan, millions of textile workers have been laid off. Millions, we're talking about millions. Because the country has too much foreign debt and can't afford to keep you know to keep the electricity they can keep it on and machine running you no know, because they really can't afford anymore so in kenya the government has held back paychecks of thousands thousands of civilians okay civil service workers to save cash okay to foreign loans so the pres president's chief economic advisor you know they said salaries are default salaries are default salaries are default take your pick wow and times and times so since Sri Lanka defaulted a year ago half a million industrial jobs have vanished inflation has increased 50 percent more than half of the population in many parts of the country has fallen into poverty this one um like famine okay like what is written in the bible prophecy okay experts predict that unless china begins to soften its heart okay it's it stands on its loans to poor people poor countries there could be a wave of more defaults and political upheavals of course
chaos, a lot of famines, poverty. So in a lot of the world, the clock has hit midnight. Okay, China has moved in and left this geopolitical instability that could have long-lasting, excuse me, effects. So in the past, okay, under such circumstances, you know, there's this big um, government blunders such as Japan, USA, France, okay, would work out deals to forgive some debt, okay, with each lender, okay, you know, disclosing clearly what they were owed, okay, and on what terms no one would feel cheated. It should be like that, okay, to maintain balance, but China didn't play those rules. They don't play by those rules. So, what happened? Okay, it refused at first to even join in multinational, <coughs> excuse me, task. <coughs> excuse me, negotiating separately, you know, with Zambia and insisting on confidentiality. You know, that, you know, you know, that barred the country from telling non-Chinese lenders the terms of the loans and whether the China, okay, China had devised a way of like must claim to the front of the repayment plan or repayment, repayment, repayment plan, a line, I mean. <laughs> so I made this confusion in 2020, you know, some Chinese lenders refused desperate pleas from Zambia to suspect interest payments, to suspend interest payments, so even for a few months. So they that refusal basis, they, it's added to the drain on Zambia's foreign cash revenues or reserves. So the stash of mostly US dollars that is used to pay interest on loans and to buy major commodities like oil. So by 2022 of November, with little reserves left, Zambia stopped paying the interest and defaulted, locking it out of future borrowing and setting off a vicious like cycle of spending cuts and deepening this issue of poverty. So sad to say, best is does China have a role in the end times? That's a very good question. So many, many believers, besties of Bible prophecy, okay, considers Revelation 16 verses 12 to 16, okay? Is it right? Yeah. 16, 12 to 16. Yeah. To possibly refer to China in the end times. Listen to this very carefully. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare to prepare the way for the kings from the east what is on the east side China then demonic spirits that perform signs go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Then they gathered the kings, kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon or Armageddon. That's in Revelation 12, 16, verses 12 to 16. So this passage, bestest, it predicts a massive climax climactic like heavy conflict known as the battle of armageddon and it occurs at the end of the tribulation end of the tribulation after the sixth bowl judgment at that time the euphrates or euphrates river will be dried up and it's already dried it's it dried up so allowing the kings from the east to invade the near east and march toward israel it is the kings from the east identification that may be associated with china turkey syria where the chinese army or a chinese-led coalition coalition will take advantage 
of the removal of the natural barrier okay and sweep westward okay to meet up with the forces of the antichrist remember who's the antichrist check out the our playlist the one that has 666 on a cover on the cover so when the end times force from china okay joins with this armies of the antichrist the seventh and the final bold judgment will be poured out so the lord jesus christ will return on the seventh bowl when it's poured out so the most violent earthquake will ever shake the world not only turkey not only syria but the world and the forces of the antichrist and the armies of the east will be destroyed so that's in revelation 16 17 to 20 correct so it is impossible to know for sure if the Eastern Confederacy of the end times will include China. But it seems like likely okay, that China will be involved. Especially China, Turkey, Syria, like that. Okay, and, and Russia. So recent years, right, have seen a dramatic rise in China's power and influence. So the development of enormous military strength, intimidation of Hong Kong, Tibet, Taiwan, okay, and other regions pursuit of the uh, global economic dominance that's what they want aggressive rhetoric on the world stage okay and of course the persecution of chinese christians all this has been characteristic of china it is not hard to imagine that the kings from the east who one day march into israel will include china so bring out your map and look where china is located so some people does this identify another battle mentioned earlier in revelation as a prophecy of china in the end times so the association okay hinges on the mention of an army of 200 million revelation 9 16. remember these countries are on default so probably china will will get all their land that those countries with the, their armies okay so there are a couple problems with this field so china's capability of equipping such a vast army okay one is that revelation 9 says nothing of an army from the east rather okay it speaks of a demonic horde that destroys a third of mankind the horses these beings ride a definitely not normal horses verse 17 i was thinking it's the robots listen remember watch that 666 it's on our playlist okay so also the battle of revelation 9 occurs after the sixth trumpet judgment the battle of revelation 16 involving the kings of the east occurs after after the sixth bowl judgment probably about three and a half years later so if the Euphrates river has dried up then we have to count three and a half years later after that so in the end times many nations okay likely including China will try their hand at conquest okay so ultimately their fight will be against God the tribulation business will be a tumultuous like times a tumultuous time of warfare disasters divine judgment but god has it all under control as psalm 2 verses 2 6 assures the kings of the earth rises up and the rurals, okay, rulers band together like rugby against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their chains and throw off their shackles the one enthroned in heaven laughs the lord scoffs at them he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath saying i have installed my king on zion my holy mountain you know that the words of god will not end it will not pass away 
And this is true, my besties. What signs indicate that the end times are approaching? Disaster, betrayal, lawlessness. If we go on and on and on, and like what we said, famine, wars, earthquakes, great earthquakes, and much, much more. So in Matthew chapter 24, verses 5 to 8, Jesus gives us some important clues all right, for discerning the approach of the end of the age or the end time. So many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. I repeat, such things must happen. But the end is still to come. So nations will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. This is what we talked about earlier. Earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of birth pains. Increase in false messiahs. Increase in warfare. Increase in famines because of poverty, plagues, and natural disasters. So these are the signs of the end times. In this passage, my besties, we are given a warning. We are not to be deceived because these events are only the beginning of birth pains. The end is still to come. Just be ready, besties. Be ready. So some interpreters, okay, point to every earthquake, every like political upheavals, every attacks on Israel as a sure sign that the end times are rapidly approaching. So while the events may signal the approaching of the last days, so they are not necessarily indicators that the end times have arrived. But the Apostle Paul warned that the last days would bring a marked increase in false teachings. Have you, have you watched YouTube recently? The Spirit clear, clearly says that in later times, okay, some will abandon the faith and, and follow deceiving spirits. And things thought by demons. That's in First Timothy chapter four, verse one. So the last days are described as perilous times, dangerous times, because of the increasingly evil character of men and people who actively oppose the truth. So Second Timothy, chapter three, verses one to nine. Also see Second Thessalonians verse uh, chapter two, verse three. Okay, let no one deceive you in any way for that they will not come okay, unless the revelation comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the Antichrist, the son of destruction. So other possible signs of the end times would include a rebuilding of a Jew Jewish temple in Jerusalem. <clears throat> Excuse me. Increased hostility toward Israel and advances toward a one world government that's happening right now this is the most prominent sign of the end times however is the nation of israel itself so best is in 1948 israel was recon recognized as the sovereign state essentially for the first time since 70 a.d okay god promised abraham that his prosperity posterity i mean would have canaan as an everlasting possession. So Genesis chapter 17 verse 8 and Ezekiel okay, prophesied a physical and a spiritual resurrection of Israel. That's in Ezekiel 37. So Ezekiel 37 says, the valley of the dry bones. Verse 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me. Okay. 
and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. Verse 2. And he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, dried bones. And behold, they were very, very dry. Verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And he answered, Oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy over these bones and said, say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Verse 6, and I will lay sinews okay, upon you, okay, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Man, you shall know that I am the Lord. So verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came they came together bone to its bone okay chapter 8 and I looked and behold there were sinews uh, on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophecy to the breath prophecy son of man and say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breath on this slain that they may live verse 10 so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet okay and exceedingly great army so chapter I mean verse 11 then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel Whew, I'm having goosebumps behold they say our bones are dried up and sour hope is lost we are indeed cut off verse 12 therefore prophecy and say to them thus says the Lord God behold I will open your graves and raise you from your graves O my people and I will bring you in the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves O my people and I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land then you shall know that I am the Lord I have spoken and I will do it declares the Lord I will be their God they shall be my people verse 15 the word of the Lord came to me verse 16 son of man take a stick and write on it for Judah and the people of Israel associated with him then take another stick and write on it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and all the house of Israel associated with him verse 17 and join them one to another into one stick that they may become gone in your hand and when your people say to you will you not tell us what you mean by this verse 19 say to them thus says the lord god behold i am about to take the stick of joseph that is in the hand of ephraim and the tribes of israel okay, associated business with him and i will join with it the stick of judah and make them one stick that they may 
be one in my hand. So verse 20, when the sticks are on which you write are in your hand before their eyes. <clears throat> verse 21, they say to them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from all around and bring them to their own land. It's a very nice. It's a very, very nice. Excuse me, this is promise. So verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over all of them. And they shall be no longer two nations and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols okay, and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions but I will save them from all the backslidings in which they have sinned and will cleanse them and they shall be my people and I will be their God it's beautiful because this is. so this is the L.A. girl so verse 24 it says there my servant David shall be king over them and they shall all have one shepherd they shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes so 25 they shall dwell in the land and I gave to my servant Jacob where your fathers lived they and their children and their children's children children shall dwell there forever and David my servant shall be their prince forever so verse 26 I will make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will set them in their land and multiply them and I will set my sanctuary in the midst forevermore. Verse 27. My dwelling place shall be with them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Verse 28. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel. And my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. Some of us is having Israel as a nation in its own land, okay, is important in light of end times prophecy because of Israel's prominence, okay. If you read Daniel chapter 10, verse 14, chapter 11, verse 41, and Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, okay, this is so with these signs in mind. We can be more wiser, okay, and discerning, okay, in regard to the expectation of the end times or the end of the age. So we should not, best is, however, interpret any of these singular events as a clear indication of the soon arrival of this end of age or end times. So. God has given us enough warnings, enough information that we can be prepared. And that is what we are called to be as our hearts, you know, cry out, come Lord Jesus, come, come Lord Jesus. Revelation 20 verse 20. But even in the midst of these verses, we can live a very calm, confident, faithful and kind lives and in doing so buses, we will make a huge difference in the lives of those around us especially the unbelievers okay you know discover how to live for Christ and the world of the end 
of ages, continuing to serve him as we await for his return. So this passage from the scripture will offer us tools that God has prepared for us so we can live a full, free, faith-filled um, faith life, you know, as a light or torch to those around us. You know, but there, there's a time when Bible prophecy is intersecting with our technology, okay, culture, unhinged like morals or morality and worldwide strife as never before, okay? We have to make the voice of Jesus a priority, as this when viewing the prophetic events happening around us. So Matthew 24, 1-14, you know, to bring the voice of Jesus to the forefront of the political, spiritual, and global conversations centered on, you know, condition of the world and the biblical connection to the events unfolding all around us. Hi. We can, by reading the Bible, Bessis, we can discover how the prophecies of Jesus can shape the way we live today. And this can also challenge us all to like, prioritize our lives in light of His return. So, we always expected life to be filled with downs, okay, ups and downs. But lately, you know, it doesn't doesn't it feel like the downs are winning? What do you think, my besties? Please comment below what you think about this one. Um, doesn't it seem as if, you know, the hits keep coming both harder and harder and it knocks you down and, you know, like closer together. You know, our world, as we speak, is packed with lies loss of trust wars and rumors of wars devastation disasters persecution greed pressure lawlessness lovelessness self-centeredness they only worship money nowadays okay some days you know it seems like bad news all around and with bad news comes questions you know why is this happening? When will it well will it end? So ask questions, what can we do? And perhaps the most pressing of it is this the end? Or is the end of the world near? Or are we already in the end times? So and this gospel of the kingdom will preach in all the world, okay, as a witness. To all the nations open all your social media accounts watch youtube tiktok and then the end will come that's in matthew 24 verse 14 so let's focus best is our attention not on the problems itself we have to be ready we have to put the full armor of god my best is you know not on the problem itself whatever problem you are facing right now but on the hand of God. That's because Jesus himself told us what to expect, okay? From this season of history, when he delivered his Olivet Discourse, you know, there's a significant sermon, okay, that most scholars have called the most important single passage of prophecy in all the scripture. So our world right now is literally in very bad shape <sighs> turmoils everywhere sometimes we feel that that way too you know don't we like in our better moments we know we're like em encompassed by god's blessing yet we seem to struggle mightily with anxiety fear resentment discouragement 
chaos of the world, you know, seeps into our hearts, you know, fear, fear can erode faith. If we let fear erode our faith, yeah, our God is more stronger than fear. So it is the true, is that true for you, but it's at times, you know, it sure is, you know, for others, so from from long experience, I've learned that staying mentally healthy in this chaotic world, crumbling world, is our daily assignment. And we can't do it without spiritual foundation, you know, to our lives. We have to put God as a center. We need God. We need Christ and His teachings, His words, okay? We need to put Him at the center of our lives. We need the Holy Spirit and His indwelling. And we need the scripture, okay, that gives us a spiritual food, you know, and its prophecies about our future. So, you see, on His, I'm talking, I'm referring about Jesus, on His final week, okay, of his natural life when Jesus sat down okay with his four disciples on the ridge of the Mount Olives they're at the crest of they're at the crest of Olivet our Lord rolled up like a blueprint of ages you know master plan the plan for the end times so Jesus began with shocking like Whoa, prediction. <laughs> One seemed totally like implausible in that moment, maybe. So the massive temple complex, he said, would soon come tumbling down. He said every, <clears throat> excuse me, single stone. Then Jesus gazed further ahead into the world of the end, the end times. And he told us, what would happen in the precarious like days prior to his return in our days right now the last days so this is the greatest message on the future ever delivered and it's recorded in the book of matthew 24 and chapter 25 mark chapter 13 luke chapter 21 for this book okay we will focus primarily on the opening of we focus on matthew 24 you see best is our lord jesus christ knows you know everything that has ever happened and that will and that you know ever will happen in the future so he knows totally totality in advance and in every detail it's detailed so he understands the future into infinity so he already knows everything that will you know before before you during your lifetime what will happen in the future so he has offered us powerful promises in the scripture his words okay to reassure us all of his presence the protection his love okay and of his ordering of our days so this is the future okay the entire world is in his hands as well so every sentence every sentence or every word in matthew 24 is addressed to us if we are believers okay through jesus christ they are for our information we are anticipating his return Okay, this is also for motivation purposes. So, when we grasp the message, okay, our plans and priorities change. Our vision should shift from the immediate to the ultimate. What is the purpose of life? Okay, we'll see today's headlines in the light of the hallelujahs of his return. So, think better, better thoughts. Yeah, you know, Feel healthier emotions. Okay, respond with better reactions and do better things. So if we sin, we come directly to God and ask for forgiveness. Like why is best is like 
Christ's prophecy then must determine our priorities. What is our priority in life? Money or Christ? Okay. The devil doesn't want us to know the Olivet Discourse. But Satan is already defeated and his future condemnation is set to his final destination, which is hell. So the one who spoke the words on all of the rules over the affairs of the nations and he is relentlessly mobilizing the events of earth toward the imminent rapture of the church to so the final battles of history the splendor of jesus return okay and the unveiling of his kingdom and the dazzling new heavens and new earth and new city of jerusalem remember the dried bones so we don't need to like we don't need to think about our politics our political ambitions cha 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 cetera okay or global problems really we don't even have to like settle for coping with times anymore we have a hope as sure as the sunshine okay as enduring as the scripture it, god promised something and as glorious as the almighty throne of heaven all right so in the world okay of this end of ages okay we we have to like prioritize and lifestyles okay must align with these powerful words of christ which echoes okay through history from that olive covered ridge so for that reason that's this we really need to focus okay we need to set our mind on the context in which jesus spoke his prophecy okay so the scriptures will explain one event after another in the lord's list of the signs of the times deceivers will arise these are the signs of the end times deceivers will arise wars and rumors of wars will escalate disasters such as plagues famines earthquakes will be devil the world and god's people will face increasing persecution persecution betrayal from families lawlessness and lovelessness in spite of it all the gospel will spread to the ends of the earth and christ will return light on schedule right on schedule as in he will not be late so those who keep going for christ best this let's do this who endure to the end will be heroes in his sight so that's why this is we must rededicate ourselves our lives to our one true king to our coming king in every area and aspects and daily activities of our lives so with his help he can stay calm we can remain confident and well prepared so well served with uncommon faithfulness unconditional love you know as we hold up the cause of his cross so we'll be upheld okay by the power of jesus resurrection so as we take okay this gospel to the world we will endure to the end so the last part of this block okay we have to have a game plan strategies besties for responding to the world of the end of the ages you know we are not powerless we may have limited control of what happens around us okay but we have extraordinary authority in christ to determine how we react we're not at the mercy of circumstances we're empowered we are empowered by the grace of god to leverage the events of life for christ 
and his kingdom may besties so too often besties we try to use god to change our circumstances while he is using our circumstances to change us besties if you're reading the scripture the word of god you'll find lots and lots and lots of stories okay that will prove okay and also examples in the bible and they're not there just to entertain us besties the stories okay the stories in the bible serves as an illustration examples okay for putting into daily practice the truths of biblical prophecy jesus is spelled out for us us let's ask the lord jesus christ for wisdom knowledge understanding from the discernment so we can understand what is written in the scriptures okay so that will give us knowledge to be prepared for what is coming so god lets us in you know god lets us in on his plans for the future so we can establish our plans for today his promises in the bible his words should shape our priorities and sustain our spirits from our day-to-day -day activities you know when the evil day comes we do not have to be dependent upon the circumstances around us but rather on the resources of god resources of god so christians are not really normal people they are extraordinary people living with supernatural power in downward spiraling spiraling world so we are on a mission here besties to help others okay spread the gospel here on youtube tiktok and any other social media there is a glorious work for both of us to do so we can no longer operate with confusion okay or complacency so the last days are almost here it's accelerating and to me it's exhilarating yet let's stand as never before with biblical spirited you know powerful inspired determined committed to serve the lord jesus christ with all our hearts whether by life okay or by death so this i know with all my mind with all my heart okay and i believe okay time is short our lord's words are unflagging and unfailing they must shape our priorities my message this one also will energize our plans as we study the lord's words okay every word of it underscores our mission underline it every syllable besties establishes our glorious priorities as we await for his impending return his second coming the blessed hope and as we say amen even so come lord jesus christ we need you lord please take us to heaven when we die we accept you lord as our lord in jesus all right, yes. so I'm just Lord, adding Lord and Savior, our Father. Father. If you don't like how you look, just put all concealer <laughs> for the whole face. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, and also here, all right, just blend it.
I just like that. Okay. Ooh. I think I did. I, I said deleted. <laughs> it's the computer. All right. So I think I'm just gonna add more here. All right. See that bestie. Wow. Okay, so nice. It's just like that. Mm. Let's add, let's just add our, kind of like that. There you go. This is just kind of like blended. There, see that one? So you can't see lines like that. Oh, I forgot. All right, so this is only if you want to. I can put shade, shading here, like contour. To make it look like um, skinny. All right, if you are my relative and you're wondering what's my job, my job is to serve the Lord, okay? And I hope that this video finds you well. There you go. There you go, besties. All right. So, I like that one. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know what? I think I want kind of like just brown. I'm just gonna use this Burberry. What is this? Contour, I think. Face contour? Yeah. I'm gonna use it for here. See that? Oh, yeah. Kind of. I kind of like it more like natural, maybe. I don't like this, you know? There you go. See that? Mm. And black. This one, huh? Here's a little bit. Yeah. 
on just like that. See that? Good thing there's no like uh, fly or mosquito because I was like <laughs> all right Wow all right there. Smoky effect. Oof. A little bit more here. Wow, Ooh, sexy. All right, so let's add. I don't have white, but let's see. I think this one, Jeffree Star, has white highlighter. Let's, let's do that. It's the highlighter. Like this. This one, the white one. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Hmm, let's add blue. I want I kinda of like there you go. Ooh, I like that. Put that down here. So 
it will make my eyes look big a little bit. Very blue. Very good, I like it. Mm. <clears throat> so, 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 what kind of lipstick? Mm. What is this? Laura Mercier. Mm. Looking for a kind of light, lighter shade. Looking for a lighter shade. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're purple. Ooh, I like this. Okay, let's do this with this. like a duck okay that's fine that's fine well like the seas i'm gonna add my eyelashes and then i will reveal for you the final painting okay? all right so i'm just gonna add our highlighter Okay. Mm 
Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's have. And then all right, let's see this. You know what, let's add some here. All right, my besties, so this is the final makeup look. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share, and comment below. I will see you all next time. God bless you all.